there's those jobs you take for pay. And then there's ones that, like you're saying, when you get to work with people you like, man, and that's what makes it all worth it, I think. Yeah. You know, I got a partner, you know, my his name is Joe Carney and he did Smoking Aces and the Gray. And we did Boss Level together and nice. Wheelman and Cop Shop and shit. And when I'm on set, it like, no matter what happens, what, when I got my dude next to me, it's like, we got this. Yeah, Not yeah. a problem. That's you awesome, know what bro. I mean? Yeah. Other times you're around people who are, are a little, you know, uh, sensitive and, uh, you know, if you yeah. have a problem, it's a problem. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Right. I like, I like the people that you can just show up and you know, you just, if you need to get shit done, you get shit done, dude. Yeah. 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 And, and if it's not working, you, you don't, you don't panic. You say, okay, what do we do to fix this? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like any, that's, you know, my old man's a, an immigrant from Italy and when something went wrong, he didn't panic. He's just like, we'll find a solution. Let's find the solution. Yeah. 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 The only choice. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. That's I awesome. love that. I mean, film is such a collaborative art form, right? It's all about that team and working together to achieve the same goal. Right. It's it, at its, at its highest level it is, but, but at times you can be surrounded by incompetence and you got to impose your will, right. protect yourself. Yeah. You got to impose yeah. your will. And then, you know, to some people you're an asshole and to other people, especially when they see the finished product, they go, Oh, I see what happened yeah. and, I, and it's a good thing. And it's a good thing you did what you did. Otherwise we would have been, we'd have been screwed. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, it's an interesting, you know, people think you just show up and say words and go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's, it's not that infinitely more difficult to make a film than people think, man. And, and like you're saying, there's not oh. only that there's the dynamics of, of ego and, uh, different personality types and so many moving yep. parts, you know, then if you all of a sudden you get weather and you're, you got rain coming through the rooftop and all kinds of different things happen to get, you get thrown every curveball in the book, but exactly That's what right. you're saying. It's how you handle it, right? That's right. Yeah. You know, Carnahan and I made a movie called Boss Level. It was great. It's me and Mel Gibson and Naomi Watts. Yeah. We had 44 days. We had 44 days on the schedule to make the movie. Wow. Two nights, two nights before principal photography, the producers call us up and they said, we can't, we can't do 44 days. We don't have the money. It's 27 days or you got to pull the plug. Now we're in Atlanta. We're in Atlanta with 180 people. Like we, we're supplying jobs to 180 people. And we're like, we got to go home and figure this out. So we, we, we were living together. We went down in the basement. We had the set all made and the miniature model. And we stayed up all night. We drank about three bottles of Jack Daniels. And Th thinking juice. we came, we came to a, we came to a schedule where we squeezed it out in 27 days. Damn. That is uh, any, good. any other time, any other time you had to shut the movie down. You cut yeah. off a third and we of made, the And we, and we made a great movie to the, to the, wow. to the point where at the end of the movie, Mel, the great Mel Gibson, who's directed some amazing movies. Yeah. He said to us, I don't know how you did that. I don't <laughs> know how you guys did it. And I'll say, I said, I tell you how we did it together. Yeah, you know, man. we, we had, we had each other's backs. And so, and, and anyway, I, I digress, but that's, that's when it's at its best. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? When you, when you trust the people standing yeah. next to you. And by the way, yeah. I love that movie too. And that oh, concept. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like that concept of you're in a video game, you have, you know, a certain amount of lives and you're like going right. replaying it groundhog day. It's, it's such right. a fun concept. And to think you guys did that. In less than a month. When he said, and, and, and by the way, you know, all the repeat action when I die every day, I, we didn't use the same footage. Cool. I did it different every <laughs> time. I was exhausted. After that movie, I was supposed to fly down and do a movie with Neil Blumkamp in South Africa. I had to go into the hospital from exhaustion. No Whoa. way. I was, I was spent. Yeah, it was Good. crazy. And, uh, but I, I thought the movie for, for what it is, I thought it came out really cool. Absolutely. Awesome, I, uh, I yeah. had the pleasure of meeting, uh, Selena Lowe actually. Oh um, yeah. She's great. She was fantastic in it. Right. That was, yeah. She talked she's a good about, girl. Yeah. Yeah. She talked about yeah. how much she loved the experience and all that. It was kind of cool. It yeah, was man. great. Good. Yeah. You, you talked about exhaustion, man. And, and you do a lot of action films, especially, I mean, even lights out, there's tons of action, you know, a lot of fighting, a lot of martial arts and, um, how much goes into preparation for you? Cause you're obviously in freaking great shape. You know I mean? I see you at the gym every now and again and, and you're crushing it and you, you've had, you've been in shape your whole career, man. What goes into yeah, yeah, Like how do you prepare yeah, for that? I mean, uh, you know, the thing, the thing we do, my, my partner in, in crime is a guy named Greg Fitzpatrick. Greg was stunt coordinator and stunt double for, for uh, Ben Stiller on all his movies and Downey and Robert Downey Jr. And all in, in his movies. And he's, uh, he's about as good as it gets, right? And he's also a fighter. 
he's he's in Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing. We train together. Um, so a movie like this where there's no time and very little preparation, him and I go to work. And, mm. and you know, we want to make the fights authentic. So we basically say, this is how it's going to go, right? Yeah. And this is where the camera is going to go. And this is what you're going to do. And this is what you're going to do. And for the most part, people understand that we've been doing this for a long time yeah. at a high level. So they kind of let it go. Sometimes you deal with egos. But yeah. in Captain America, you have a month, two months every day you're with the boys. We're Rehearsing over and over and over and over and over. And, you know, it's, it's a fine tuned machine. Yeah. Um, I like doing, I like doing it both ways. It's yeah. fun both ways. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's high level problem solving, man. I get it. And to, yeah. to me, so like, that's that, what it is. Yeah. It gets my juices going. It gets me like, like it's, it's how do we solve this problem as efficiently and effectively and then be able to tell a great story at the same exact time, you know, and a lot. Exactly right. Yeah. What you're saying though, a lot of that comes with experience, right? Like when, when did you. What was your first like action role? You know, like I, I was I was reading up and it said you started in plays, right? You did plays in high school and then you're doing some commercial work and then you got more yeah. into film and TV. But yeah, bro, I was just a struggling actor. Yeah. I, I, mean, I was a guy. I didn't even take it seriously for a while. I mean, I started out in soap operas by accident. Yeah. Like my all my friends came to L.A. to be actors. I just came to L.A. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And so and, and and my first my first like experience was. I went with my buddy Ricky to an audition for a show called Friends. Now, I went with him because I drove him there because he didn't have a car. And I was sitting with him, right? And the girl came out. He went. The girl came out and said, are you, wh wh when, are you next? And I go, no, I'm, I'm. She goes, no, no, you, you should. Re are you an actor? I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in, and she gave me a piece of paper, and I just kind of read it off the paper, right? And she should stay here. And the other person came out, was a producer, and they, I read it for them. And they said, we need you to stay here. Wow. And I was reading for a role called Joey. Wow. Uh, on wow. Friends, right? Now, obviously, I didn't get it. But I went yeah. through a process. Like, I screen tested. Wow. And I had never done it yet. And that was kind of like, I went, oh, maybe I could do this. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I and been. like anything, like fighting or any sport or, or riding dirt bikes, when I wanted to do it, I had to go to the best person to learn how to do it. Like when I wanted it, I thought I was going to be a professional motocross rider. Mm. I had to find the best motocross coach to teach me about riding motocross. Yeah. When I wanted to fight, when I want to fight Muay Thai, I go to fucking, I go to Thailand with Bo Kao, the best Muay Thai fighter on the planet. And I, I want to train with that guy. Yeah. Right. So I did the same thing. Like I sought out the best teachers that I, that I could find. It kind of crash course me in what this is about. But it wasn't until I did the movie Warrior with Nick Nolte. And I was around Nick Nolte a lot. And he had a big binder and that was his character. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> and that that's when I know that's when I said, wait a minute, I want to be that. I want to be that actor. I want to be yeah. that kind of an actor. I want to go deep into this. Or I don't want to do it. Yeah. Like it's kind of stupid. It's kind of stupid if you just kind of I don't know, showing up and saying lines, right? You, yeah. you want to understand what this was. And, and that kind of started it. But I did everything from soap operas to sitcoms. I did everything I could possibly do until my buddy Gavin O'Connor put me in Warrior at the ripe old age of fucking 40 something. Yeah. And I still looked like I was 28. Yeah. But I, I, it was so convincing. Like ASU, the, the guys called me to be, come and coach them. On the wrestling team, I'm like, hey guys, I'm not really a coach. <laughs> that's oh, incredible. Wow, dude. Well, that's and awesome. but that's when it started to get deep. You yeah. know, I did a movie called Pride and Glory with my buddy Gavin O'Connor with Ed Norton, Colin Farrell, and John Voigt. And again, I was watching these guys do it in a whole different way. Yeah. And I was like, I wanna, I wanna, if I'm not gonna do that, fuck it. I'll go do something else. Yeah, but that's such a cool like mindset to have too, because you're you're just giving more to the craft at that point. You're giving more to the audience, and like that's like like if I want to go to the theater and go see a movie that I'm excited about, if the person just showed up and you know maybe they're drinking all night or whatever, and you can tell they kind of just went through the lines, weren't committed to the character, or whatever. That's not entertaining to me, man. That's like, dude, you no. took you took me out of it. What you're doing is taking people more in, right? Right, and and you as an actor know, like you might be excited about a concept for a film, and you put on you put on the movie, and you're like, oh, <laughs> terror. 
these yeah. people are terrible. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I watched some, I watched some Australian series last night that my girlfriend had on. I'm like, oh my god, I could see the words on the page. I mean, oh, they're yeah. so like, yeah, that's the every worst, dot, man. every comma and dot dot dot. I could see it. I yeah. could see it. it's terrible. They they just showed up. Like they got the job and they just showed up. And yeah. so so the the this is a long way of coming back to this. I've been fighting my whole life from wrestling to boxing to Muay Thai, jujitsu. I've been doing jujitsu for 20 years before anybody knew what jujitsu yeah. or UFC was. And so when I got the opportunity to combine that with like warrior, it was the role that kind of, and although it was a smaller role, everybody saw it. And so yeah. I be, I became in their eyes, this certain guy, which Hollywood lacks guys, yeah. guys, yeah. dudes, and uh, I got some role. I got some parts. You know, like it, it, it started to happen a bit. But I was old, man. That's why I tell people there's no rules. I hear people go, "I'm 33." I'm like, so what? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, I, to, to be fair, dude, I deal with that every now and again. I've been I've been in the industry for about 10 years now, and and I think every now and again I'm like, it's slow. COVID was slow. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, actually, one of those roles. Uh, that I did saved my life, man. It, it brought me back out of it, brought me back in. I'm like, dude, this is why I do it. I love this, man. Doing the righteous gemstones, right. but it's but it's to your point though. Like even after the strike and everything, it's it's not work for everybody all the time. Not everyone has that luxury, right? This is such a a, oh, a gift to do this, level. you know? Yeah, exactly. At, at any at any level, because you get to us when you get to a certain level, the things you're being offered, you don't want to do. Yeah. Mm. Right. And like, like my agents at CAA have recently said to me, Hey, you got to stop doing these movies now. Like when I got divorced, I did some shit that I shouldn't have done, mm. but I had to, I had to. And, and the money was crazy. It was like, you know, that's when you get the money when the movie's not so good. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but now it's like, you know, it's diminishing returns. Cause if you do too many of those, you're done. Yeah. You're done. And then you're kind of like, you know, sadly, cause you're still a great actor. Guys like, you know, Eric Roberts are forced to do some things. Like I remember Eric Roberts from, from back in the day when, he, when, uh, when he did Pulp of Greenwich Village, he's, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. But, but now he's, there's a cautionary tale to that story and, and you don't want to be the cautionary tale. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's, 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 you know, at this point in my life, I got to be careful. How about that? I got to be <laughs> careful about what I do and don't do. And, you know, I'm about to go do this movie, which is based on a memoir. It's a beautiful story and there's no fighting and there's no, no killing. And it's based on this guy's life. Uh, this journey he has across, it's like a coming of age story for a middle-aged guy. And, uh, I couldn't be more excited to just go and act, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to go do that and go deep into somebody's, you know, you know, spiritual emotional and physical and intellectual journey that's that's you know as an actor that's what you want to yeah. do yeah, I, mean, I can fucking throw punches all day <laughs> you know it's like yeah so what <laughs> thank you for watching don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe and hit the bell for a whole lot more to come